Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Ortega and my co-presenter is Michael Roche. We're from the NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The purpose of this presentation is to showcase the open source F Prime Sphinx reference deployment that runs on the Sphinx. So first I want to get into a little bit of background, kind of explain the Sphinx CNDH board, the open source F Prime framework and uh, describe the origins of the Sphinx reference deployment. Then we'll talk about the uh, software configuration of the Sphinx reference deployment, followed by a description of a typical hardware configuration for a Sphinx reference deployment. Uh, next, I'll provide the open source links to the software repos that we'll be talking about, and I'll provide a short uh, walkthrough of the Sphinx reference deployment. And then finally, um, I'll have some closing remarks. So, I hand it over to Michael Roche to talk about the Sphinx. Hello, so I wanted to start off and tell you about why we first developed the hardware, the Sphinx board. Um, we, there was an initial need about seven years ago where we had some missions like Neoscout and Lunar Flashlight, which are going deep space, where we needed a small, reliable, lightweight, low power board um, that we could use on these missions. So that's where the design of the Sphinx board started. So now we're working on upgrading the board um, from a class D or a type two type mission to a class B or a type one type mission so that we could be used on our future missions like a Mars sample return and Europa lander. When designing the board, we decided to base the design upon the Goldman Geisler GR712 uh, system on a chip because it, uh, it was low power and it had a lot of interfaces in with it and also it had a uh, dual core Leon 3 processor. Um, so that's the old Spark processor that you might have had on a desktop many years ago. Like some of the interfaces it gave you, it gave you Spacewire, it gave you UARTs, it had a I to C and SPI, it even had a 1553 if you wanted it, but we didn't design that into the board initially. So it gave us everything we needed for the missions, um, all on a small, um, low power chip. So that's what we based the board design upon. So in designing the board, we also wanted to keep it into a small form factor that would fit on a uh, 1U CubeSat if we wanted to use it in that form factor. Uh, so, and we wanted to keep the power really low. So we have a one watt idle power or about two and a half watt average power or five watt max power on the board. Um, and we have, we're basing it upon the GR712, like I said, but we added in the NOR flash for storing the flight software images. Um, there's 32 megabytes of that. We have 256 meg of SD RAM and we have eight gigabytes of NAND flash on the board for storing science data. And as you can see, it's a uh, Rad hard, so the GR712 processor is 300 kilorad, um, and the board itself is rated at 15 kilorad because of some of the parts. But like I said before, we're upgrading the board, so the newer design is rated at uh, 100 kilorads for all the parts uh, minimum. So we're work working on upgrading all the parts that were lower radiation tolerant. So after we designed the board and built it and had it implemented for uh, the missions we had at JPO, we then decided to go ahead and um, offer it off to industry. So we hit, worked with Colbum. We gave them the design, and now they're uh, developing the board and selling it to other projects. So I believe it's being used on the Janus mission um, from Lockheed Martin. They bought the board. So Colbum now is selling this Class D or Type 2 board. Um, for anybody to purchase and use. Okay, so my last slide about hardware before we get into talking about software. We had some good success with uh, our Sphinx Class D or Type 2 board that now we are upgrading it for use on Class B or Type 1 missions. So we're replacing any parts that uh, did not were not rated at 100 kilorad or higher with parts that are rated at 100 kilorad or higher and going to build the board with type 1 parts. So you can see the differences here in the chart. Uh, the yellow 
means what's different. So we replace the FPGA with, from a Pro ASIC FPGA to a RTG4 FPGA, so power is going up a little bit because of that. Uh, but the radiation tolerance is much higher. We're also replacing the NOR flash. This NOR flash is rated a lot higher, like 300 kilorads, so uh, a lot more stable. We the NAND flash is not rated at 100 kilorads, so it's an option uh, either install it and have a lower radiation tolerance or not install it and have a higher radiation tolerance. Um, so that's what the differences are. We're in the middle of the design process now. Uh, we have our PDR coming up on this uh, next month. And um, we're also working with Coleman Geisler to uh, on this project so that way they could uh, also sell this new board and we could use it on our missions like uh, our sample return in Europa Land or what it's targeted for. So thank you. Okay, so what is F prime? F prime is an open source flight software framework that is targeted for instruments, CubeSats and smaller platforms. It is currently baseline for JPL Sphinx Leon 3 avionics system on a chip. F prime is a component based architecture as well as a software framework to support that architecture. It's designed from the ground up to be compact and reusable. It includes the framework, code generators, build tools, a GDS, and it also has a unit test environment. It's designed to make it easier for developers to concentrate their efforts on mission specific development rather than re-implementing common patterns. And you'll see this in the software configuration slide. So F Prime runs on multiple OSs like Linux, Mac OS, Sigwin, VxWorks, and most embedded ARM processors like the Raspberry Pi. This presentation will be focused more on the VxWorks 6.7. So Lunar Flashlight and Neo Scout. These are two CubeSat missions that use the Sphinx platform and they run the F Prime flight software framework. And as part of these CubeSat's flight software development effort, we designed, implemented, and tested drivers for the Sphinx. We developed drivers for the NOR, ADC, Sphinx Time, Spacewire, and we developed drivers for both the on chip and firmware SPI, GPIOs, and UART. Now for the open source F Prime Sphinx reference deployment effort. We are using the Sphinx platform, the Sphinx drivers, and the latest version of F Prime, which at the time of this recording is version 1.5.3. Now one of the differences between this version of F Prime and the one used on Lunar Flashlight and Scout is the build system. So when we used the Sphinx drivers, uh, we updated their build system to be able to compile in this uh, deployment. Now I want to talk about the Sphinx reference deployment software configuration. Here we have the Sphinx drivers that we inherited from Lunar Flashlight and Neoscout. Here in blue, we have the F prime core service components. These components come with your standard download of F prime. And here in the middle, we have the deployment specific components. Now the main work for us and anyone wanting to use this reference deployment is done in two places. One is in this purple layer, developing the uh, deployment specific components. And second is in the components connections. That is how the components interact with one another. For this configuration, we have fly software info connected to the Sphinx time driver because Flight Software Info has commands to update time on the Sphinx. We have the driver demo connected to these Sphinx drivers. Now Flight Software Info and driver demo generate both events and telemetry and those get passed to the event logger for events and uh, chan telemetry for telemetry. These components relay that data to the uh, ground interface, which transmits to the GDS via UART driver. And um, also we can send commands to the software via GDS. 
and the commands go through the UART driver to the ground interface, then to the command dispatcher. Uh, this component will then dispatch uh, the command to the appropriate component. A typical hardware configuration would involve a workstation where you have F prime's GDS running. That workstation would then be connected to the Sphinx via a UART connection, and the Sphinx reference deployment would be running on the Sphinx hardware. Now, the Sphinx hardware could be connected to other devices uh, via one of its connectors, like, uh, for example, the SPI. Now, for the open source links. The first link will take you to a slick web page for F Prime documentation. Uh, this documentation details where to download F Prime, how to install it, uh, and it comes with uh, many useful tutorials. The second link is to the F Prime Sphinx reference deployment, and the third link is to the uh, repository um, that hosts the Sphinx drivers. So I want to give a brief walkthrough of the Sphinx reference deployment. We make use of Git submodules to allow us to link other repositories into our deployment. We link uh, with F Prime, the F Prime Sphinx drivers, and the F Prime VxWorks repository. The VxWorks repo is an OS abstraction layer that we built for the VxWorks 6.7. Now, going into the F Prime Sphinx driver repo. You'll find uh, this list of drivers like the ADC, GPIO driver, and the NORFLASH driver. Taking a look at the uh, NORFLASH driver, uh, you'll find this file structure. Now this file structure is typical of FFRAM components. You have your XML, which defines your uh, components interfaces, and is used by the FPRIM autocoder. You have your component impl, HPP, and CPP files, which are initially generated via the autocoder, but are then uh, fleshed out uh, with component-specific core logic by the user. Um, you would also expect to find a, a docs and a unit test directory. In the docs directory, uh, you'll find a software design document. And the document shows uh, the components design its interfaces uh, which are called ports and the uh, functional description of each port SDDs can not be found in each component to help the user understand the components use and to aid the user if they choose to modify the component uh, and if you do modify the component you can always rerun the unit test to verify uh, the code changes did not break the component. Closing remarks. The Sphinx hardware platform is an excellent choice for missions that need small size, low weight, low power, with reliable Type 1 space grade parts. And thanks to the innate features of modularity in F prime, we were able to rapidly produce this Sphinx reference deployment by focusing our development effort to the uh, deployment specific components. It's that purple layer I uh, showed earlier. This Sphinx reference deployment can be used as a starting point for those projects uh, using the Sphinx platform. Thank you for listening to our talk.